This is Tom, our superintendent, Bellevue Community School District in Bellevue, Iowa, coming to you with this week's Believe in the Blues, the Comet highlights, uh, board meeting updates, a little more extended this time, but want to give you some information on the last board meeting we had, which was on Monday evening. Uh, we approved uh, a um, actual one resignation, Adam Smith. Our high school softball coach has resigned, so that position has been posted uh, for people to apply to. We'll be making some decision for that the beginning of January or so, somewhere in the realm like that. Uh, we also approved Cord Heim as an assistant, a paid assistant for uh, Fresh Soft Basketball for boys. He has been a volunteer in the past. We had some visitors from the Bellevue Big Program. We had Kurt Ernst and Matt Yeager, the two instructors there, along with, uh, with Grace Dunn, Bryn Doherty, who is also a uh, a student representative on the school board, and uh, Jackson Wagner. And they talked about a variety of different things the programs they're doing, from the aquaponics, growing lettuce, to the Big Buddies program, to the Kids That Care, a food pantry that we have for our community. Uh, I talked about, about the Big Honey program and several other things as well. But I think what, what really summed it up the best was when, uh, when Bryn talked about it's kind of non-traditional learning, looking at things, what are my interests, what do I want to pursue, and then our teachers connecting that to standards. So that's what it's about, and I just know we have about 30 students involved in that right now. It's been a great program, and we'll continue to grow and continue to expand. The lettuce from the aquaponics was actually served in our uh, in, by our food service this week. We'll continue that. They're actually looking to grow tomatoes here in the future. I've done some other things as well, and that's all based on some fish from the DNR. They talked about the failures they had with that in the past along with the success as working through problems that way and the critical thinking and problem solving skills that kids are developing and ideally that it's not just in one program but it's across the board from PK through 12 in a variety of different areas for students that way and recognizing their interests interest as we continue to look how can we personalize learning to meet their needs and that's an ongoing process for all of us that way. We also had a legislative update from State Senator Carrie Kelker. She came to visit us. Uh, Representative Andy McKean was actually at a meeting last month, but this month Carrie came over and I just want to thank her for uh, for visiting with us. She explained to us that she covers 42 rural communities in her area with a total population of about 62,000 Iowans. She's very happy. The collaborative work they've been able to do between the parties, she said, you know, parties work together 95% of the time very closely. But sometimes the perception is they never work together. And, and she says it's a, it's a very successful uh, collaboration between the two parties at the state level. And uh, she appreciates that as well. So I bought some things she was very happy about. The extension of SAVE for schools, uh, the $90 million in education in some manner throughout the years, and then the real transportation funding that way. Some issues she sees in the future are mental health uh, issues that way or mental illness and working to improve those. She also mentioned some other things, but those are some highlights in that regard. We also had a review of the Iowa State Assessments of Student Progress, the ISASP, I-S-A-S-P. You can see some of those results online that way for our, for our district. This is the first year of this assessment, so the, the norms are different than they were in the past. I did share uh, the past from the Iowa Test of Basic Skills and Iowa Test of Educational Development, but also recognizing it's hard to match those percentages up, amount of students proficient, or most students not proficient in some ways. Uh, I always use the example, we want 100% of our students proficient. Some people say, well, if you get 80, 85, that's fine. Well, my point with that is maybe that's okay if I'm one of the 80 or 85% my student is. But if they're not, then I wonder what's going on. So we have a goal, we have a goal and we have a requirement uh, that we need to reach each and every student. There's a mandate there saying that we need to reach every student in some manner. We also followed up with that, talking about some key financial aspects. There's some information about that online on the superintendent's page. You can see that information. And the big thing there, as we'll say, you know, we talk about our unspent, um, our unspent balance or our, our, our authority to spend, unspent balance authority uh, budget that way. We're at around 25%, which is at the upper level, and that's a good thing. That means we have some funds for uh, extra services we need to provide or for emergencies that happen, whatever the case is, so that's a positive. Our solvency ratio is 15%, which people want us to be between 5 and 15% for those emergency things. So we're doing well financially at this time. Enrollment increases have helped, but that can all change uh, based on needed expenses and everything like that that way. I also have a little chart that I show people, and this is part of a this is also part of the uh, handout online, you'll see, but it just goes and talks about how general fund monies can be used, instructional support levy, management fund, the 
Pepple and the voted Pepple and the debt service management save, everything like that that way. So you can look at that more. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out to me at any time on that as well. Also, at a facilities discussion, there's some handouts uh, involved in the notes with that as well that you'll see online. Uh, building cost analysis update, where are we at with that? We're working to see if we can reduce that price from 14.5 or 14 million down lower, working with some local people on that. Also talk about a more immediate need for next school year space in the elementary and what our options are. Can we move people around the elementary and make space for an extra section? Remember, we already added one extra section for first grade this year, which will continue into second grade. We have three sections of kindergarten right now, which will continue into first grade. And we have a four-year-old preschool that will lead into three sections of kindergarten for next year. And where does that room go? And what happens two years down the road or three years down the road? What are our enrollment projections and how long would they remain three sections? Um, had a lot of discussion about that. Had a work session actually on December 6th about that as well. And just looking at some options in that regard. And then we also talked about summer, some potential summer projects. Shared some ideas with them as things that may need to be done in classrooms and beyond that way. So just to recognize that. We also approved some early, early graduates, assuming they meet all requirements by the end of the semester in January. And they were... Brandon Eggers, Kyla Haxmeyer, Hannah Irwin, McKenna Clemmy, Zachary Straub, Bailey Van Zuden, and Kyan Weimerskirch. And they do not have to graduate early, but they will have an option to based on filling out some paperwork for us that way if they choose to. Uh, we also approved a music license with BMI. Basically, it allows us to play music at events. Yes, we've been doing that for many years, and districts across the state and across the nation have been doing that, but there are copyright laws. And that is being uh, monitored much more closely, and the regulations have been uh, uh, stiffened a little bit that way. So we need to have a contract, and that's about $250, that contract for the year that way. We'll also talk about a career tech and education academy that way, and working with the Eastern Iowa Community College District. Yes, we offer college classes either in person or online at our district with the average graduate having about 18 credits. Want to throw that in that way. We have several students who are very close to an associate's degree already, uh, or they will have one, one or the other, that way. But looking at how can we expand those programs to possibly another facility in the county or in the area, there's some talk about that, but also looking at going to Makokoto for some classes or Makokoto students coming here. We are starting in, in uh, an electrician apprenticeship or electrician's academy uh, in our district this year, kind of extending off what we already do with the electricity with Mike Marshall, uh, but basically extending that more to look at college credits. And then we also have some students going to Makokoda, extending our welding program we have here. We have a very strong welding program already, but they go to Makokoda, they can expand that out based on staffing and things like that. So we're also looking at some uh, some business, which we have in Mrs. Weber already. We, we are set up very well in that regard. Culinary arts, auto mechanics, nursing, which we do some already, IT and cybersecurity, and then construction trades. So working with some other local county, local school districts, and uh, along with Jackson County, also looking at Clinton County. But then really uh, working also with Eastern Iowa Community College District. One thing we do have planned for next school year or working on right now is to start a teaching academy here to try to uh, recruit some people into teaching, get them a head start to for in the teaching field and education, give them some experience here. That will be taught by myself and some other people in the district that way. Uh, Jackson County Conference Board, we appointed Mike Reed to that. That's basically a group of superintendent, or excuse me, a group of school board members, group of <clears throat> city council or mayors that way that kind of helps set the budget for the different areas within the county, the assessor's office being one of them. With a comment reading and reflection from, uh, from Disruptive Thinking, a book that we also had last week, we looked at innovative uh, thinking and disruptive next practices. Uh, it, that, that reading is in there. I encourage you to read it. It's one page long. Uh, I think it's very high quality. It talks about how we have to change what we're doing with innovation. Uh, how, we have to change what we're doing with education, and part of that is innovation and looking at different ways of reaching students. We have some information on this National School Board Conference in Chicago coming up in April. Uh, the district survey that was taken this fall is now posted online on the superintendent's page. You can look at that. Safety and security, yes, we've had some recent threats, and we had an evacuation of the school building uh, last week one day, <clears throat> and we are working on that. We are planning on having a speaker come in and talk about the consequences of making a threat um, that way and looking at that. Uh, we also talk about bus inspections in the state of Iowa starting this, uh, st starting in 2020. We need to have every vehicle that transports students at suburbans and cars inspected as well. And they have to have a fire extinguisher, a mess kit, 
things like that in it that way. And there's $50 charge for each one of those vehicles. Right now we have all of our buses inspected that way, but that will be expanding. Extracurricular update, we talked about band uniforms. We haven't had new band uniforms in 21 years approximately. It is time to upgrade those. So looking at that, Mr. Davies will actually be coming to the next meeting. I uh, have arranged for him to attend that. We also talk about a scoreboard for the football field and the track that way and looking at what is needed out there based on the other board uh, being outdated and having problems finding parts and the brightness of it that way and just making upgrades as we go along. Part of that was talked about in the facilities uh, discussion too for the upcoming summer. And, uh, and we also talked about um, our next meeting being on Monday, January 13th. And we'll go from there. If you have questions, anything like that along the line, please let me know. I want to remind you quickly, though, of upcoming concerts, December 16th and 17th. That's next Monday and Tuesday. We have the high school winter concert on Monday at 7 o'clock and the middle school winter concert on Tuesday at 6.30. We'll see you then, everyone. Have a good one.